In games one and two against the Minnesota Timberwolves, Jamal Murray was pretty much a no factor. In all of his 62 career playoff games, Murray has never had back-to-back -back games with these type of numbers. Now, when looking at the film, it is pretty clear that Minnesota's size and length was giving Murray a bunch of problems. Throughout both of these games, Jamal couldn't find any breathing room with the ball. Every single shot he had was heavily contested, and the Timberwolves constantly had multiple defenders in his face. Jaden McDaniels was one of the many defenders who was giving Murray headaches because he has both the foot speed to step out and guard on the perimeter, plus the mobility to work around these screens, to then use his reach to contest shots. So while I do think Minnesota's defense deserves a ton of credit, I also think it's safe to say that Murray wasn't fully healthy for these games. When looking closer at these clips, it's pretty clear that Murray's calf was an issue. Not having the quickness to cleanly blow by the defense on the perimeter, and lacking the pop off the floor to finish at the rim. I also thought Murray wasn't getting the same lift into his shot. Watch him here stop and get into this turnaround at the free throw line. And notice how he doesn't get much pop off the floor, causing this jumper to fall short. And that lack of explosiveness was also affecting Murray's play off the ball. You'll see him here pitch the ball to Jokic, then come back to the ball for this handoff. But as he sets up this cut, he pretty much gets no separation against Nas Reed and reads right in Murray's airspace as he rises up. Now from game 2 to 3, Murray got 3 full days of rest, and he came into Minnesota looking like a completely different player. Now the first thing that stood out to me was that Jamal was attacking the Timberwolves pressure. In the first two games, I thought Minnesota's full court pressure was giving Murray some real problems. And again, that lack of explosiveness was preventing him from completely dusting the defense. But compare that play to this play, where Murray is going to explode to his left and get into the paint in 5 seconds. Then watch him jump off that injured calf and explode to the rim. And then in the half court, I also thought Jamal's first step was way better, having a much improved burst with the ball, which allowed him to get these clean blow -bys. You'll see him here drop down into a combo off the dribble. Then watch how Murray is going to pound the ball and creep his left foot up. Then he's going to push that left foot back, which gives him the momentum to shoot through this gap and extend to the rim in one dribble. Watch Murray here set up this driving angle by first gliding out to his left, which gives him a straight line drive through this gap, and he's going to slice past the gap defense with this low pickup, to then again explode off his left foot and get this finish on the right side of the rim. And that explosiveness off the dribble also allows Murray to more easily set up his pull-up game, where Jamal loves to attack into open space and get the defense off balance, to then stop and pop these in-between looks. Denver on this play is going to clear out the entire left side of the floor, and let Murray isolate against Cat 101, and Murray is going to again use this lateral skip. Then dip his shoulder, selling the drive. And notice how he gets Towns to sink his weight into his back foot, giving Jamal the leverage to rise up. Now when looking at these clips, I also think it's pretty obvious that Murray is getting much better lift into his shot. And this is huge because that elevation allows Murray to generate these mid-range pull-ups without creating a ton of space. You'll see him here being guarded by McDaniels, and Jaden does a good job of fighting through the screen and keeping himself in front of the ball. And from this spot, it's just him and Murray playing one on one. And Jamal's gonna simply attack to his left, then fake this spin towards the middle. Then notice how Murray's gonna take one quick dribble to his left and elevate up and over McDaniels' length. So as a score, Jamal obviously has that tough shot making gene, but what I think really ties everything together is his balance and footwork. When getting into these pull ups, Murray is almost always dealing with lengthy and fiscal defense, and many of the shots he's getting into are both off balance and heavily contested, but Murray's stability and coordination with the ball is what allows him to set up and sink these really difficult looks. You'll see McDaniels here pressuring Murray at half court and Jaden's able to fight over this ball screen and keep himself attached to Murray's hip. But watch how Jamal is going to slam the brakes by going behind. Then he pivots his left foot across and transitions into a step back, 
And as Murray lands, notice how his feet are squared up with the sideline. But as he elevates, Jamal is going to rotate his hips to get himself angled to the rim. You can see more of that balance and footwork on this play, where Murray and Jokic are playing a two-man game, and as Murray attacks to his right, notice how he's going to slow down and put his eyes up, which lifts Nas Reed out of his stance. Then Murray's going to take one aggressive dribble towards the baseline and stop left-right into this tough pull-up. That's his spot, and that's the cash out. And all that balance and stability carries right over to Murray's three-point shooting, where similar to his mid-range game, pretty much all of Murray's outside looks are off-balance and heavily contested. You'll see Towns here come up to meet Jamal at the level of the screen. So in response, Jamal's going to give a bump with his shoulder and forearm to then take one escape dribble out behind the line, and he gets his feet set up for this pull-up three. Now on this play, Cat's going to again step up and show on the screen, but Murray this time is going to attack outside of his frame to then get into the step back three towards his left. So when playing with the ball, Murray is a really dynamic three level score, and that's obviously going to attract a lot of defensive gravity, opening up Jamal's playmaking. First of all, to save the now in pick and roll, Murray has a whole duffel bag of different passes. Being able to needle these tight pocket passes, while also throwing these over the top hook passes, this time here is tough where Jamal is working off the screen to his right, and he's going to wrap this one-hand pass around Nasri and lead Jokic perfectly to the rim. Now going forward, I honestly have no idea who's going to win this series, but it's pretty safe to say that in order for Denver to advance, they need Jamal Murray to consistently be playing at a high level. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments who you have winning the series. The kids here.